This episode was sponsored by Critical Dice and the Endless Bag of Dice. Welcome to the Compendium, a resource designed to help you spend less time learning D&D and more time actually playing. Um, a, a little bit, another kind of like subset question there, and this is actually somebody that is on our Patreon um, that asked this question when I kind of posed the same question to them. And I struggle with this too, so I'm really glad that they brought this up. How do you keep track of NPC combatants when they're minis? <laughs> Like, right at the table. So, Cameron, I'm going to throw this one at you because you do some amazing stuff with your terrain yeah, and you your do. minis. Like, <laughs> this is 100% in your court. I found a method that eh, is working better for me than it had been. But what do you do, especially when you've got more than one or two bad guys that are attacking? You know, you've got 15 goblins coming at them from all direction. How do you keep track of whose hit points are down, which one already hit? Like, how do you run that? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's just practice. Like I remember the first time I had a, a combat that uh, was like three enemies. I remember I was just like totally like confused. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. So I actually bought, I don't have many more, but I actually bought like these little uh, dots. Like they're different colors. There's like four colors. It's like blue, pink, yellow, and orange. Yeah, you can get them at the dollar store, right? Yeah, at the dollar store, wherever. And so I would like put a little dot on the base of the mini. And then I would, you know, on my little scratch piece of paper, I have to keep like a thing, a, you know, little scratch pad like this or something. I would just have a B for blue, P for pink. And that's how to keep track of it. Um, the D&D Beyond Encounter Builder thing is awesome. It, it works very well. Uh, but I think for me, spatially, so like if I know that I've got baddies on different sides of the of the bat of the battlefield, I look kind of like, you know, there's not really a rhyme or reason to this, but like, you know, if one of the guys on the far end of the battlefield, I might put it at the very top and then the other guy at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh it's just doing things in a way that you're not gonna set yourself up for failure. You don't go so big that you know you're gonna like just forget everything. Um and ultimately, too, like if you're stressed about it and you're not keeping track of things either, your par your players will pick up on that, and then you can lose a little bit of credibility. So, don't be afraid to I don't want to say take the easy route, but you know stick with just that one ice troll, and then really, really, really dive on in with it, and you know throw things in there like uh, different other sorts of challenges, like Jason was saying, you know whether it's like a a slippery floor or a collapsing stalactite. Uh, you know, things like that, you can also escalate the combat. But yeah, I would say um, markers and stuff like that, those things help too. But right. really, that's, it's just repetition. Yeah, that's basically what I ended up doing is when I started painting minis, I painted all their clothes different colors. So especially my goblins, because mm -hmm. you have, I mean, mm -hmm. you always have more than one goblin. Um, I painted all of their clothes different colors, and then I painted a ring around the base of them that matched the color. And so when people were attacking, I'd be like, which one, which color? They'll be like the orange one or the blue one. And it was it was easier for me because I did kind of the same thing where I just went through and I marked down like the color mm -hmm. code. I mean, I started running out of colors when you have that many goblins, mm -hmm. but you can just do your best. The other option, which may or may not be easier, is you can invoke mob mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can just, if you have enough of them, you can just do kind of a, a variable rate and be like, oh, well, 50% of them are gonna hit these are the ones that hit, you know, and so you're not even having to track multiple ones. And then you can just track your big bad, kind of like you were saying, Cameron. So you may be able to like break that up. And lastly, your players are there too. Like if you need help, you can ask your players for help. Like you could say, hey, you know, running this combat, this is a lot of bad guys. Can you help me keep track? Or can you run these three bad guys as well as your character? Right. And so don't, don't necessarily take on all the load if you don't have to. There might be a way that you can offload some of that or delegate some of that responsibility to your players that's not going to ruin the facade of, you know, the secrecy of the game or the story. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cameron, you were holding up those sheets. What, what, were, you, what were those? Yeah. So this was a big, giant, epic encounter that we did. That basically, the town was being attacked by, attacked by a dragon. And, like... They obviously were not going to defeat a dragon at you know fifth level, sixth level, whatever they were. So what I did is I had like this is a ballista. I gave this to my players to run the ballista, and it won his turn on initiative. One of the guys, uh, there's this like orc that he can summon through his magic item that he had, which he actually ended up not using, so it didn't come into play. But I had it prepared anyways. Right. 
and this is just like two NPCs that I gave them set blocks to, and just hand these out to the players. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Like, like in my experience, players love handouts, and especially if it's like, now we're doing a nautical battle. Who wants to man the cannons? Oh, I do. You, know, you <laughs> hand that exactly. sheet to them, right? The uh, the uh, Hellfire machines in uh, Vernus uh, has that, where you can man different things, and man, that's just awesome when you can do that kind of stuff. Like a little ad like addendum with this too is I do what Cameron does as well. Like I will put. Um, the hit point totals different places on my sheet of paper that match generally where they are in the battlefield. And when they cross streams, I get a little mixed up, but that's kind of a little cue for, for me and how to do it. Um, but uh, two other things you can do with when tracking damage for your, um, your monsters is one, and I learned this one just really recently, don't subtract damage from the hit point maximum, add damage up to the hit point maximum. Hmm. So if one, someone does before. if someone does six points of damage and then does seven points of damage, you just 13. And you keep adding it until it hits 52, which was their hit point maximum or higher. Because adding is way faster mentally for most people than subtraction, especially when you have to go around the zero. Uh, and you kind of like go, uh, 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 and realize that you're messed up. Uh, so that goes way faster and way easier. The other thing, and I don't highly recommend this, but it can be used really well judiciously and in certain circumstances, you can use narrative damage where, especially for a BBG, like an ancient dragon or you know a god getting ready to ascend, don't give them hit points. Like know what range they're in, especially high level stuff, right? Where your players are doing 150 points of damage on their turn. Um, you can just go, okay, I know about how many hit points and I'm generally tracking like a status bar in my head of where that is. And then narratively where it makes the most sense for you to put out more minions or for them to assume their final form or for this really great like smite, this final smite from the, uh, from the paladin who's got like one hit point left. You're like, okay, that's it. That's the kill shot instead of someone doing like a magic missile for four points and that kills the monster like no come on that like yeah. so I, I i get the appeal of that style and uh like who were we were talking about chris solo earlier from uh fable 42 he does this a lot especially with his big bads yeah. um and he does it really well because you would never know and he just told us and we we're like oh uh, but if you did that for like every orc and goblin that's not going to go well um uh, so again, it's a cool idea, but just use it very selectively. Yeah, right. and kind of going off of that, and also kind of what I said earlier about enjoyment is, uh, you know, if you have eleven goblins and you know your your players are flanked by three of them, and say they did seven points of damage and the goblin had nine points of health and, and, and they didn't quite kill it, like screw that, let your players be the hero. Like take off those two points, you cleave the goblin's head off, and you go to the next one. Cause like the look on their face whenever they like just one swipe through you know a, a foe or something like that and then move on to the next one like that is just, it's just like giving a kid candy they're so excited yeah. and they feel so empowered yeah right no don't neglect the story for the mechanics yeah, yeah. don't let math get in the way of a good time yeah. i mean okay that's kind of a hard one because D is all math no mm -mm. <laughs> story. collaborative <laughs> storytelling that's right sprinkled with a heavy amount of math Thank you guys so much for joining us this week on The Compendium, where we are talking about all things D&D, &D, helping you spend less time learning and more time actually playing. This episode was sponsored by The Critical Dice and The Endless Bag of Dice, where you can get a new set of dice delivered to your door every single month for as little as $6.99. Click on the link in the show notes to learn more. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed listening in this week so that you know every time we push out a new video. And also leave a comment below if you learned something new in this episode that you didn't know before. Thank you so much for listening in. We'll see you guys next time.